XXX Tentacion was one of the most unique, enigmatic, and overall amazing artists of this entire new generation of music. In fact, I would personally go on as far as to put X as a top three favorite artist of all time for me. And while we lost X too soon, his music will definitely live on forever in the hearts of X's fans, as well as the general audience that listens to emotional hip hop. But I gotta say, it's obvious that while X was alive and actively working on his music, he put on hit after hit with albums that told stories and had beautiful structure. It's after his passing that in my personal opinion, the team did go on to make some very questionable decisions. I thought this would be an interesting topic to cover since X's team has just released a collaboration with Lil Uzi, so in today's video, I want to go over the overall scope and history of nearly every posthumous release that occurred under X's name and give my overall opinion on what his team did right and where they ended up dropping the ball. After the incident that occurred on June 18th, 2018, the hip hop world took a heavy loss when the death of up and coming legend XXXTentacion was announced to the public. The thought of such a talented artist having his career and life cut so short devastated many fans, including myself, all over the world. However, when it comes down to the music, X, like many other artists, had songs that the majority of fans haven't heard that were never released. And while yes, his unreleased discography was significantly less than someone like Juice World before he passed, at least we had some new releases to look forward to in the future that we never heard before. The problem that X's team essentially had from the start was that to me, an outsider looking in, it seemed like a lot of the integrity and the releases that followed was just nowhere to be found. This is seen almost instantly with the first release after X's passing being an industry sculpted single collaboration with another fallen artist, Lil Peep, named Falling Down. I can almost remember the backlash that they received as if it happened yesterday. There were rumors going around around the the two didn't even like each other while they were alive and i still don't know how fully true that is because there were multiple claims that contradicted each other for example when the song was first announced fish narc who was another member of goth boy click with peep said that quote unquote peep explicitly rejected triple x for his abuse of women and spent time and money getting triple x's songs removed from his spotify playlist and wouldn't have co-signed that song don't listen to it with lil tracy another artist who was very close to peep stating that x and peep were quote unquote never even friends and didn't even like each other but then there was also a statement from fat nick who was a mutual friend to both x and peep saying that right before lil peep passed nick and peep had a conversation about x and peep had even planned to meet with him with x being quote unquote super happy about it so you see what I'm saying? It seems like while we'll never know the truth about the actual relationship Peep and X had, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that the overall production and release of the song definitely left a bad taste in the mouths of most fans. Don't get me wrong, as a fan of both artists, I did enjoy the song, even though X's verse seemed clearly unfinished and improvised, but just the overall vibe that I got from a song like this being released was extremely weird to me. And only about a month after the release of Falling Down, we got Arms Around You, which was another single collaboration, except this time with more artists. The artists featured on the track were, of course, X, Lil Pump, Sway Lee, and Maluma. And this one has to be one of my personal favorite songs from my high school times. I still remember to this day the video of Pump previewing this track on his Instagram and taking everyone by surprise since he was actually singing on a song instead of repeating the name of a washed basketball player or overpriced designer brand over and over. <laughs> And it was actually pretty good. I don't believe that this release was controversial at all. If anything, I think this single being released ended up putting X in the eyes of a whole new Latin American crowd due to Maluma being a huge name in that genre at the time. So I'd actually commend X's team for this. Good song, good performances by every artist included, and just overall good vibes. But after the release of Arms Around You is when the questions of what X's next actual project release would be started arising. Singles are great, and while the quality of music we got at the time was arguably exactly what we were looking for, most of us wanted an actual album to sink our teeth into that was diverse and had a good follow-up to the legendary question mark that was released in 2018. This is where Skins comes in, which was X's third studio album. This was an album that received many mixed emotions at the time and continues to do so to this day. I don't think many of us 
realized it back in 2018 when it was first released but skins would ultimately be quite possibly the most important posthumous release that came from the xxx tentacion name it essentially set the groundwork for what fans could expect going forward and i don't know if i'm in the majority when i say this but i was very disappointed not because the music wasn't good in fact there are a lot of gems on this album that i grew to love such as bad which was of course lead single to drop prior to the project and even songs such as guardian angel which was a sequel to the legendary jocelyn flores containing reverse samples from the song as well train food which was a very emotional song since that's where x discussed the inescapability of death and giving off similar vibes to i spoke to the devil in miami and my personal favorite whoa mind in awe which was more sound effects and quick statements rather than it was a lyrically constructed song but the overall vibe of the project left many fans with the same thoughts rushed unfinished and not what we expected this can be clearly seen in the running time which was not even 20 minutes long and keep in mind 17 which by many would consider a short album was still two minutes longer than what we got with skins and even with 17 being a shorter album no one thought that it was unfinished after taking a listen to the project skins was the first musical release from x after his death where many people including myself truly felt his absence and the fact that his music would just never be the same. But this was only the beginning of what would continue to be a clear pattern of unfinished music being put out and released to the public. Only a month after the release of Skins, we got a whole other project by X, kinda. In January of 2019, Members Only Volume 4 was released, which was a collaboration tape that included songs from X, but also members of his group, such as Ski Mask the Slump God, who was obviously one of X's best friends, as well as other artists from the group, which X had working relationships and friendships with, such as Coolie Cut, Craig Zen, Kill Station, Kid Trunks, Bay Santana, Rob Banks, and more. X appeared on only six out of the 24 songs that were released but the weirdest thing about this project was in my opinion the marketing the title of the project wasn't just members only volume 4 and it wasn't released under a members only artist profile it was specifically released on x's own artist profile being titled xxx tentacion presents members only volume 4 i do have to admit this is probably the project released under x's name that i paid the littlest attention to but then again can you really blame me and i'm sure many of you would agree when i go to x's profile I want to listen to X, not a bunch of random artists, even if they were friends of X. I just feel like this was a cheap hype attempt from the label to push some of the other artists just by association. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I hated this project. Songs like Sauce and He Diddy were tracks that I loved and would still listen to to this day. But one of those two was an X song that was by far the most popular track on the tape, and the other was a solo track from Ski Mask, who was X's best friend and one of his most prominent duos. I do think X's team and label learn their lesson with this release however because to this day this is the only members only project that released following x's death And after the release of Members Only Volume 4 is when X's absence was really shown due to the rate at which X's music was being released drastically slowing down. In fact, I would go on to say that 2019 was the last real year for fans of X receiving unheard music in a somewhat abundant capacity. In September of 2019, we got a cool concept delivered to us by X's team, which was the Question Mark Deluxe. This not only featured the entirety of Question Mark, one of X's best projects, but also the instrumentals to all those songs without any vocals but there were also other cool neat hidden gems in there such as the proud cat owner remix featuring rico nasty which was dropped a month prior and acted as the lead single the entirety of a ghetto christmas carol voice memos from the recording sessions of the original album and my personal favorite which was an acoustic version of the song numb i wouldn't call this a new release and instead call it more of like a little surprise and a cool piece of content given to us by x's team as an anniversary present regardless nothing really bad to say Say about this one personally. But just like the feeling a year prior, X's fans started itching for a new project that included X as a primary artist and had tons of new and unheard music by the majority. Bad Vibes Forever, X's fourth studio album was dropped on December 6th, 2019. And this one is extremely weird to me. The track Royalty, which was apparently the official lead single, was actually released back in July 19th, even before the question mark deluxe, but was forgettable to say the least. In fact, if we're being honest, the 
the real lead single to this project was Heart Eater. An originally scrapped track from Question Mark, which featured X's ex-girlfriend Geneva eating a bloody heart on the single cover. I really like this song, probably because it was completely finished, as shown by the fact that it was originally planned to release when X was still alive. But just the overall vibe and flow of the song got me extremely excited for Bad Vibes Forever, and I thought it acted as a great teaser of what's to come at the time. Before Bad Vibes Forever officially dropped, we also got another single just two weeks prior under the same name as the album featuring Trippy Red and PMB Rock, two artists which X collaborated with frequently. And this was another great track in my opinion, but I don't know if I'm alone on this one, but something just felt off once we got the full album. While yes, it did seem more finished than Skins, Bad Vibes Forever just seemed to have less soul than Skins. Something about the entire project seemed to really showcase the over embellishment and just just all over the place-ness, is that, is that a word? I don't know. Everything was weird, from the structure to the features to even the sound, and I can't put my finger on a specific problem with this project, even over three years later. Overall, this was by far my least favorite of the four projects we've gotten to this point. But that was it. That was the final studio album, and it seemed like we had heard the entirety of X's unheard discography, a true end of an era, or at least that's what many of us thought. 2020 and 2021 were very quiet years in terms of X's music. A weird thing that did happen in 2021 was X being included on Trippy Red's Trip at Night project in the track Danny Phantom, which was just a reuse of Trippy and X's verses on the song Ghostbusters that came out in 2018, except this time on a rage beat, since that was the entire vibe of Trippy's album. I feel like the majority of us only listened to the song a handful of times because, well, one, Ghostbusters was a way better version of the song, and two, why the hell was X on a rage beat? That wave of rap happened way after X's passing. The overall song just seemed like a hype trap to promote Trippy's album even more, and while that project was actually one of my favorites of 2021, Danny Phantom was by far my least favorite song on there. But 2022 was actually a huge year for X. This was when we finally got a full-on documentary on X with unreleased footage that was filmed when he was still alive, as well as statements about his allegations. Overall, I loved this entire documentary. They didn't only focus on X's positives, but really tried to give a complete story of his life, and I gotta give them some props. Along with the documentary, we also received a compilation album called Look At Me, The Album, that acted as a soundtrack for the film. The only unheard song on the project was True Love featuring Kanye West, which I actually really liked at the time of release, with the rest of the project featuring various SoundCloud era X songs that were never fully released on DSPs, as well as some of X's biggest hits off of his other projects. I honestly really don't mind this move at all either. Listening to this project made me go back and re-listen to X's entire discography and just appreciate it all over again nearly four years after his passing. Taking a trip down memory lane, if you will. A great way to round off a legacy that will impact us forever moving forward. So now we get to the present day, 2023, and just earlier this month in January, we received an unexpected drop from X's team. A single collaboration with Lil Uzi, someone who I personally always wanted X to collaborate with while he was still alive, on a song titled I'm Not Human. And boy, is this a really weird and just puzzling move to me. Like, yes, we know Uzi loved X and even went as far as to say that in his prime, he saw X as his only competition, but other statements made by Uzi on Aiden Ross's live stream only a year prior completely contradicted this release. Yes, I would love to do a song with him, but I'm really weird on stuff like that. I understand that they're not here living, and what if that's not the vision that they really want? This clip definitely makes Uzi look hypocritical in a way, but then again, to play devil's advocate, I don't think this was really done in bad taste. It would be another thing if Uzi released a song with an X verse on like a Jersey beat or a Rage beat. Instead, Uzi went out of his comfort zone to completely match his X's style and overall vibe on this song. While we don't know if Uzi's verse was recorded before X's passing, if I had to guess, I'd probably say definitely not. I think Uzi paid his dues on this track and tried to make it as close to X's vision as he could based on his performance. And we also have to keep in mind that according to many sources, including Uzi himself, X really liked Uzi and wanted to make music with him. He just never got the chance to do that. 
So to conclude everything, I think many of you could easily see how weird X's entire posthumous discography is. Well, not every piece of music released after X's death was bad. In fact, there were obviously plenty of hits that came out from it. The consistent vibe of nearly every project and piece of content was that it seemed unfinished and just overall attributed to making his absence feel more and more prominent every time. Maybe this was the point. Maybe we were meant to feel like this after every listen. After all, X's passing felt rushed. X's career felt unfinished. And if that was the overall subliminal message with these releases, then they accomplished what they wanted to do. But there was still a part of me that just feels weird about the whole thing and felt like X's label and team just wanted to squeeze the well completely dry before giving it up and letting the music live on. As I make this video, I'm Not Human is the only release from X in 2023. And while we don't know if any will follow in the future, one thing that's clear to me is that after every release, the absence of X is shown more and more. And a huge part of me wishes that they would stop while X's legacy is still beautifully imperfect rather than keep trying to fill shoes that they never will. But what do you think about this entire discussion? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as a lot of time and research went into making it. Thank you so much.